Good morning, friends. Mmm. Mmm. Coffee, coffee. I love you. Who else loves coffee? Mm. I'm just gonna take a moment and appreciate my coffee. I got this mug. Good morning, Roxy. My priestesses and I had an amazing numerology lecture last night with a guest lecturer, um, and it was very exciting. So I've spent a lot of the time last night dreaming about numbers. Wasn't that awesome, Roxy? It was so cool. I'm, I'm so thankful we got to share in Nicole's knowledge. And I'm thinking all kinds of things. I was gonna talk about this awesome mug that like I feel like okay coffee really is like a ritual for me or tea both of them but um there's a coffee shop near Seed to Star which is also near my kiddo's school and a lot of mornings well you know like once a week I would go there and I would meet up with some friends or with my husband like if he took Jonah to school and then I would meet him at at the coffee shop at Banjo Coffee and they had these mugs one day and I just, like, the way it felt in my hand, you know you just get, like, I don't know. And the fact that it was bright yellow and the shape of it, I was just, like, drinking coffee out of this mug. And I was like, I really? I want this mug in my life. So I went and asked if I could, if I could buy the mug that I was drinking my coffee out of. And the barista guy was like, uh, I mean, I'm not sure I really, like, don't have, like, permission to just, like, sell them. But Mark knows the owners, and so he t messaged the owner and was like, "Hey, my wife really likes the mug. Can like we can we buy it?" And they were just gonna give it to me, but I insisted on paying for it, which I don't always do. Sometimes, I mean, I do accept free stuff, but I just thought that was so sweet. And now, when I drink out of it, I just think about my little coffee shop mornings, which I miss. All right, I'm doing this a little earlier than normal today, but I like, I don't really have a normal, right? So I can't even say that. I just like to like, I'm never gonna be one of those people that does something at the same time all the time. Sorry, y'all. Some people are like, oh no, I missed you. And I'm like, well, it's kind of hard because like, I'm just like sometime during the morning hours, I'll, I'll pop on. Julie, it's so good to see you. See you, see you, you know, I feel ya. I feel your energy. So, we have a new moon coming up on Friday. May 22nd is Friday, right? Yes. Yes. So, we're like kind of gearing up. The moon is still like waning into darkness. So, you might be becoming aware of things that you are releasing. Old behaviors, old patterns, old thoughts, old situations that you're moving away from and making that a little more conscious. I would like, I use this time as a way to check in of like, what is choosing, wanting, or needing to exit my life at this time? What am I ready and able to let go of right now? Oh, Roxy says, it feels so great to hear you say that because it's so true. Authentic timing, right? Like I learned, my life got so much better when I released, oh, speaking of release, look, we're tying it all together. Speaking of release, when I released my, my judgment around me being flaky because I truly honor a more authentic rhythm, which isn't linear. It's not like I can't, promise I'm gonna like be somewhere and do something at the same time every day and it's not because I'm not capable of making myself do that I'm absolutely capable I had to do it for years when I worked in a normal office um, at, at the nonprofits I've worked at like I was the hyper accountable always responsible always like not even on time always early like ready to go person I was like one of the most dependable like you can count on her people ever. And as I've moved deeper into working for myself and living the most aligned life I can, what became abundantly clear to me is that the actual like aligned flow doesn't follow our clocks and calendars very well at all. And for me to honor myself, it meant having to break out of the way the world kind of operates. And I tell people, like, I check email twice a week. 
I'm not, my phone is on do not disturb most of the time. I make myself available to others energetically and otherwise when it works for me. It's too easy for me to feel that pull. Everyone has a pull. When people reach out to me, they want something, right? And it's not a bad thing, but they want a response. They want to schedule a session. They want to ask a question. Sometimes they just genuinely want to share, like, wow, I really appreciate what you're doing, um, which I love, and thank you for doing that. <laughs> but um, there is that awareness of that that relationship we're in with everyone and that the energetic relationship is happening whether or not my like mental energy and physical space is going to that and so being aware of the subtle layers of energy that i'm constantly impacted by kind of forced me or i chose to accept that i'm always going to be impacted by that so for me, I have to take extra steps to cultivate space for my own presence and centeredness and like to not feel that pull, right? And it gets easier over time. And there's times I'm better at doing that and there's times I'm worse at doing it. And it's just, that is what it is. But as much as I can, I try to really be aware of myself in energetic relationship with those around me and let go of the expectations of how the world operates so that I can honor what is truly in the flow and in alignment for me personally. But also not use that as an excuse, right? Because it's too easy to jump all the way of like, oh, that's just not in alignment. That just wasn't in the flow because you want to avoid like a difficult conversation. Like, no, you gotta like, find the happy medium with all that, right? I can't use that as a way to just avoid challenging things or things that invite me out of my comfort zone. Although I kind of love going out of my comfort zone. So I love my comfort zone, but I also love going out of it. So I got that working for me. Okay, I'm really feeling the Starseed Oracle today, y'all. We haven't pulled from that in a while. We were pulling from it a lot. Good morning, Helene. I love you. Alrighty, here we go. Let's pull a card from the star seed oracle. Talking about what we need to let go of, what we need, what can we release ourselves from this week as the moon wanes into darkness. Oh, I love this. The cosmic heart. This is the card. It's so, this is like, I, this shows up for me a lot. The cosmic heart. It is asking us to, to connect with our sense of devotion, potency, make your life a moving prayer. And I love this because this is even reframing my question, which happens a lot when you read for people. Like sometimes it's like, um, we're not answering your question. We're actually reframing your question because like the perspective you're rooted in is what needs to shift. So when I choose to make my life a moving prayer, there is nothing to release. I just move into alignment. I just let the flow of all that is move through me in ways that feel joyful. And that is what I stay devoted to. And that is where my potency lies. I am the most potent when I'm aligned with the divine flow of energy in the world. But I am gonna read because I love, I love how they've written this, this book. It's all beautifully channeled. I think it's under C. Yes. Okay, here we go. Ready? Settle in. Story time. When you surrender to a state of devotion, you find yourself flowing with all of life. You're being called to refocus your attention deep within to the intelligence of your own heart to bow with deep reverence to your inner temple, to live your life in devotion to this place, to make your life one big moving prayer. Perhaps you felt a bit off kilter lately, sensing that the potency of why you're doing things has gotten a little watered down or weak. Perhaps you've forgotten what made you start doing them in the first place. If so, this is your call to take a moment and reconnect with the truth 
at the very center of your heart, to get back to the essence of what you're about, to turn your gaze deep, deep, deep. There are seasons for harvesting and seasons for sowing. Right now, you're being called to plant your soul's seeds and sing to them with deep devotion, to feed them with the sweet waters of your own soul, to lose yourself in the potency of what it is that most expands your heart, to live your life according to what makes you come alive rather than what everyone else thinks to make your life one big moving prayer. That's like literally everything we were just talking about. I love it when the cards do that. It's just what's aligned. And that happens like the more aligned you are, the more that shit happens. You just get constant validation and like same messaging being repeated. So mm, let that sink in today. And, and do at least one thing today that really does make you come alive, that reminds you of who you really are, alrighty? It should light you up. It should bring you a deep sense of joy, of satisfaction, of a buzz that's like, oh, I'm alive. Look what I can do, alrighty? I love y'all. Have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.